perfect. I forget what he's gonna pick. Like if I paid attention, yeah, you gotta do best be like out of three. Pattern. Best out of three, so you can. No, no. it's all it's everything, all or nothing. All or nothing. Yeah. All right, puppy. Yeah. We have a special guest. You want to do we, the honors? Yeah, we've been talking about bringing the duck on for a long time. So uh, this is Dr. Erica Arizaga, and a childhood friend of mine and longtime colleague of yours mm -hmm. in Yuma. And Which so she'll get into. Yeah, so it's but, uh, we'll talk for those about of you who, who don't know Erica, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, my name is Erica, and I am a mom, and I work as a teacher in Yuma. I've been teaching 22 years, mm. and um, I've been teaching, you know, for that long, but I also did other things, like I did social work, and oh, wow. um, yeah, some counseling in there. How'd you become a teacher? How'd you get to where you're yeah. at today? Because you currently teach for the college. Yeah. So how did you get to that point? You start off reading poems. Take us through that academic journey. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I went to Yuma High, right? And um, was kind of like a school nerd. And I think probably people told me, you know, you'd be a good teacher. You have that prototype. So prototype. You know, just went that route, you know? Yeah. What's a prototype? <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of different prototypes, right? Different teachers, different styles. Some of what, them are good, some of them are What is your prototypical teacher? I guess yeah, it depends on, are you male or female? Mm -hmm. And then every individual has a different preference. But anyways. Okay. Yeah. So Yuma High, it took you where? To Arizona Western College. I did a bunch of credits there real quick. And then I transferred to the U of A in Tucson. That's unfortunate. Oh, you moved to Tucson. Yeah, mm -hmm. she went to the other school. <laughs> the Harvard of Arizona. <laughs> yeah. The Harvard the of Harvard. Arizona. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. funny. Yeah. But uh, so you you majored, your undergrad was in? In education. Okay. So I what I did, what it used to be called like home economics. Oh, that's right. But then they changed the name to family and consumer sciences. It sounds way like. better, right? Because yeah. you think of home ec, like, oh, you're going to bake mm -hmm. me some cookies. Mm -hmm. You know what in I think of when I hear home ec? What? Forrest Gump. What? I sit by one in home, in home economics. Oh, not oh. super bad? No. <laughs> oh, that's right. He yeah. took home yeah. ec and super bad. Huh. Yeah. Look, we all know home ec is a joke, no offense. It's just like everyone takes his class to get an A. It's bullshit, and I'm sorry. And I'm not putting down your profession, but it's just the way I feel. I don't want to sit here all by myself cooking this shitty food, no offense, and I just think that I don't ever need to cook tiramisu. But I okay. digress. So yeah, so we learned how to, you know, cook, fashion, retailing. But we also learned development, um, and then those frameworks within Sociology and psychology and family studies. Now, is the development more like child development, like it's human development? Okay. So we call it um, womb to tomb. Mm. Wow. Never even thought about that. I like it. Hmm. I mean, yeah, just see child development, and one thing I I learned later on as a teacher is anything that goes on as a kid, like it sticks with you forever. So really, even as an adult, no matter how much you you how old you get how mature you think you are, you're still dealing with yeah. whatever the hell went on your childhood. Yeah, so you're unlearning as you Womb the tomb yeah. means makes all the sense in the world. Learning and unlearning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, so you had your undergrad mm -hmm. with an emphasis in family or mm. home economics. It's just the degree. So then we had all those like myriad of courses to teach various courses that are offered in K through 12 systems mm -hmm. and then also the education part of it. Okay. So I did my student teaching there in Tucson and then I started working in Yuma. And that's teacher. where it took you to mm -hmm. the high school. Yeah. Then yeah. I started being a high school teacher. I did that for years and what did you teach in high school? I taught fashion, child development, culinary arts and then a really cool program that was like a teacher prep program. Yeah. So the kids would um, study at the high school but they were also co-enrolled at the college and getting college credit to be um teachers like it for here we call that dual enrollment dual enrollment mm -hmm. yeah okay mm -hmm. wow and then we started i started that in san luis, in san luis okay mm -hmm. and then your masters mm -hmm. took you where so after I got my master's, I did first a counseling master's and I started like moonlighting for the college. So I'd work all day teaching and then in the evening teaching for the college. Mm -hmm. um, 
psychology, family studies, and sociology courses because they related to that field. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, then I went into social work. And then um, we in social work worked under federal funding. And okay. so they had called us in and said, hey, we may not get funding. You know, I didn't know that. Look for some, look for some work. Actually, Did all the friends I've, I've ever heard that work do social work, man. Mm -hmm. Like some of the it, it's almost like traumatic because a lot of them won't even talk about not only because it's confidential, but no, right. I'm, I'm sure they see some pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, my caseload was uh -huh. uh, offenders mm -hmm. trying to reintegrate to education or job. Yeah. So back into God, yeah. normal life. Yeah. So like a lot of goal setting uh -huh. and um, home visits and making sure they're at work. Sounds like a defense attorney. <laughs> Is it yeah. like the Johnny Cochran of social yeah. work? That's right. Great stories, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But then you decided, well, when did you decide to continue to the next level into your doctorate? Yeah, so then I, um, well, I think I always had, I just, it wasn't always like super linear, but I always wanted to pursue more schooling because I enjoy learning. Um, I just wasn't sure like where and how to go because our community is so rural, we don't have a a program for that so mm -hmm. we had one program that doctoral program which is an education through NAU mm -hmm. and I had applied took my jury did all the application process and got accepted mm -hmm. so like okay you're accepted and they called me into my last interview and the guy who was like going to retire that semester he said hey we're cutting the program because of funding so I said oh, okay he said but we have this program but you're gonna have to drive to Flagstaff so there I was like, okay, which road do I take? Do I wait another full year, academic year, to apply again in November? It, it, what, what, about how old were you about this time? I was like late 20s. Okay, so Lu oh, Luna still wasn't there yet? Mm -mm. Okay, so Luna still wasn't in the picture, mm -hmm. Luna, her daughter. Mm -mm. Uh -huh. Pre, yeah, PL, <laughs> BL, BL, before, before Luna. Luna. BL. <laughs> before Luna, yeah. back so when we had a life. I <laughs> didn't want to wait a full n year because at the time, I mean, now it's so great because I tell my students, you know, grad school for them is is just literally at their fingertips. They okay. could start yeah. rolling starts, spring, fall, even the um, semester is broken up into quarters. So students can kind of start any time based on the school they attend. Back then it wasn't like that. You mm -hmm. had to wait a full academic year yeah. and do the whole process. And I said, I can't wait a full year. I'll just do the program. So anyway, long story long, um, I ended up having to drive a lot to Flagstaff Oof. and do residency. What's the drive from Yunma to Flagstaff? It's like five hours. five hours. Woo! Yeah, so I had established residency. Luckily, I had an aunt who lived there, so oh, I didn't have to pay nice. for like yeah. an Airbnb a or a hotel. Comes through. Little breaks. It was really nice, and she was great. And yeah. your doctorate was specifically it's in? It's an education. Okay. Yeah, it's an education. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Which, you know, I, I know I did my, I, I did a master's degree in, uh, that's what it was, master's in education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so even though I s once, that was the first time it really hit me. It was like, you know what, even though we're history teachers, we're really more like child psychologists, having to pick kids' brains apart, mm -hmm. you know, how to organize a classroom, what makes certain kids, kids tick. And so we see you now as this psychologist, right? Because you teach psychology at the yeah. college level. Yeah. But you said you got your doctorate in education. education. And really, to me, it's like the same thing to a certain point, correct? Yeah, because you have to look up what's the personality and the dynamic yeah. of a class. Dude, it's like a matrix in it. You have oh, yeah. freaking Every 30 plus yeah. kids yeah. jumping up the walls. You add or subtract one kid, and it oh, makes... Oh, yeah. Yeah, the culture changes. Now, like I don't that. know how, yeah. how it is in the, at the college at the level. College. Yeah. Do you see that dynamic? Oh, yeah. I didn't really see... So, so I teach at the college family studies, and then I also teach psychology, which are also cross-listed with sociology. So mm -hmm. for example, you could have identical classes, but they might be PSY or they might be SOC, right? Mm -hmm. But they're the same class. Oh. So, or they might be um, family, we call it family science. So family science, FAS, and it might be SOC, but same exact class, right? Yeah. They're just prefix different based yeah, yeah. on what major the student's doing. So mm -hmm. discipline, but same exact content. So, oh my gosh, the students in family sciences are very, much like highly conscientious they're very kind predominantly female so like the prototype i'm telling you right mm -hmm. there's a prototype for the family sciences and okay. then you have i also teach some of the social work program courses because mm -hmm. we don't have a full-time social work oh. professor so i take on some of those right mm -hmm. 
We definitely have that. How many classes do you teach? Like a all, lot. all a of them? Lot. <laughs> all of, a I lot. So far, I've counted three, I think. <laughs> all of the classes. Yeah. God. We have a lot because we're rural, so we are stretched. We don't have the faculty to sustain what is needed, right? Mm -hmm. So um, there's, I just see that, and we, it's, we make jokes out of it, especially with social work, because they tend to like lack boundaries and they say yes to everything. Yeah. And I was like, I know your prototype, and they just laugh, you know, oh yeah, that's me. <laughs> that's what so, you tell me. It's okay to say no. Yeah, sometimes. yeah. Say no. Practice saying, it. Tell me no. Saying yes. <laughs> saying no is saying yes to something else. Yeah. That's a good And then the it. psych students are, are different because they're, they're kind of linear mm -hmm. and they're kind of all business. Um, so. Now, tell us how we are connected. Oh, yeah. How uh -huh. did that come to be? Like, okay. so, because. Yeah. I thought it was interesting once I found out. Yeah, because when, when yeah. Renee told right. me what was going on, I was like, so Wait, who? So <laughs> rewind back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How do you know Nick? Okay, well, Nick, go, we go back to. So like kindergarten, we okay, found yeah. out today, right? Yeah, we yeah, thought we, first grade, but it's kindergarten. We were actually yeah. in the same kindergarten class. We didn't realize it. Okay, huh? and the school was? De uh, De Anza. We went there one year. Then next I year. I lived down the street, yeah. Then the next year, we went to Hedrick. I went there first, second yes. grade. And she we had did the same also. teacher. Uh huh. Ms. Zinn. Yes. Wonderful lady. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, I feel like she was in her 80s. She was, she, yeah. But she would like, <laughs> yeah. she would like run every day. Yeah, isn't that funny? Oh, really? Like, yeah. Uh, yeah, she would run every day, even like to the day so she dropped. So did you ever, like, I'm sorry, I don't want like cut the story out, but did you ever run into a teacher that you had as a child and you, you saw him like as an adult and you're like, oh my God, I thought you were way bigger than. Like, like at the grocery store yeah, or something? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I had a teacher, well, who actually wasn't even my teacher, but he was the teacher next door and everybody knew him. My brothers had him. And when I was in sixth grade, he was like a giant. Oh. And then I saw him subbing one day at, when I was at San Luis. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, he used to be taller. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't. Mm -hmm. He was like slightly taller than me. Mm -hmm. I was like, does that make me a giant now? Yeah. Like, I don't know. Anyways, so uh, Hedrick. Mm -hmm. You went to Hedrick together. Yeah, yeah, Hedrick. And we both had Ms. Zinn. Uh -huh. That's when I, that's actually, so when I was little, I couldn't see. And nobody knew, so. I was, glasses. yeah, oh. I didn't. So like ben, the Ben Carson story. Yeah, like, so like, let's like say. She's, hey, she's stupid, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, she can't even read. Right? <laughs> so Mrs. Zim would give me a piece uh -huh. of paper, uh -huh. like a worksheet, right? Yeah. First grade worksheet. And I couldn't do it because yeah. I couldn't see the, the writing. Yeah. And then she, she said. thought you were Forrest Gump before Forrest yeah, Gump. Yeah, so <laughs> she said, well, <laughs> my parents went in. She said, Erica's just not cutting it. Like yeah. her brothers, you know, something's it's going like, on. Erica's just not. No, 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 no. She's going to have to <laughs> Your repeat. kid's uh -huh. special. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Girl. <laughs> so they're like, oh, well, you know, I have great parents. Yeah. So they got on it right away. And, yeah. <laughs> and back then, like we're talking early 80s, we didn't have intervention. early. Like mm -hmm. my no. daughter at three at her preschool had early intervention, like eyesight screenings mm. and dental screenings, yeah. I'm sure with yours and too, right? And like, and everything. Yeah, yeah, all of that so early now. This is the 80s, is, homie. Yeah. We didn't have that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They even told me, like, I've talked to Vietnam vets, it sounds different, but the same thing. There was no such thing as PTSD co coming out right. of Vietnam yeah. back right. then. Yeah. So, it, I mean, this is the 70s and leaving in the 80s. Yeah. So, yeah, we didn't have this stuff. Or so ADHD, right? right? Yeah. 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 I wasn't diagnosed until I was an adult. Imagine if you would have been diagnosed earlier. <laughs> I would have been, oh, been in Mr. Pinero's <laughs> classroom. <laughs> 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 you would have been his TA. That's right. So, yeah. so, eventually, you leave the valley, Imperial Valley. Yeah. My dad's work took us to Yuma. How old were you at that time? So I went into seventh grade, uh -huh. so it was 92. So so sixth grade was the last grade here. Yeah, okay. I was uh, so actually 11, because I was always like a year younger uh -huh. than everyone. Yeah, in my, cause you started I'm, early. Yeah, I started um, kinder. You were four. I was four, yeah. You were like one and you were in kindergarten. Yeah, I was one in kindergarten, like, yeah. Like, look at you, you speak already. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. barely four, but um, turning five in like November, so. Mm. But the cutoff, I wasn't young in, in California uh -huh. because the cutoff was different. Yeah, yeah, because in Arizona you you have to be five before September. Yeah, but okay. not not here. So you you left after sixth grade. You're in Yuma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You went to high school. Okay, mm -hmm. and we actually were in high school at the same time, mm -hmm. but we didn't know each other. Mm -hmm. I think you were a senior, and I was a freshman. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. we don't talk to freshmen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was a scrub. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, yeah. I was hey, a scrub. Hey, I went year. to your I went to your party. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, hey, yeah, well, yeah it was but no fair because I left early my senior year. You know, uh, just went to fourth period, so I was like, 
Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have yeah. just really gotten early. lunch. Yeah. I, so I, feel, I feel too many classes. To I would have just gotten yeah. lunch. Yeah. Actually, yeah, lunch was my favorite class period. But anyway. Yeah, lunch was fun. Even during class, I was yeah. out to lunch. I didn't have <laughs> lunch my senior year. Yeah. <laughs> the cafeterias loved me. Yeah. The cafeteria ladies, man, they were the best. My yeah. aunt yeah. worked at Yuma High Cafeteria. I probably loved her. Yeah. Funny how we have this. Her like name is Irene. <gasps> she goes by Rini. No way. She's my, my name. She's awesome. Wait, I don't get it. Yeah. Like some people call me Rini. Oh. Yeah. Anyways. I said, like, oh, I knew that lady. Eh? No, yeah. but it's So then good. we yeah. met my first year teaching in San, San Luis. Oh, wow. Yeah. But your brother worked there. And yeah, my brother worked and there. And I went to high school with And you brother. knew my brother yeah. in high school. Yeah. He's a big nerd. There's, there's five of you or six of you? There's six three. of us. There's I'm six Caesar, of you. I'm three. And you're Caesar number three. Was oh, the middle Caesar child. Yeah. <laughs> the middle child. Yeah. Of course. This makes sense. Yeah. Caesar goes like date back to. Mid nineties being the nicest guy to ever. Yeah, they say. Live. That's yeah. what they say. But anyways, he's. Every, he's who who did like more, Renee or Caesar? Be honest, go. <coughs> Ty. <laughs> Ty. <laughs> cop out. God. Yeah. It's like asking who I like better, you or hey. Michelle. Yeah. Or Michelle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, easy. Yeah. Hey, Caesar's yeah. not here. You can. Yeah. Say yeah. That. Sorry, Caesar. We tried yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so fast forward to now. Yeah. And then one day, uh, we started the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And then you reached out to me like, is that Nick Santana? Yes. I'm like, yeah, why? I saw it on Facebook. Yeah. I can't believe you work with Nick. Like I literally, I, I literally yeah. don't, don't like start a day. Yeah. I literally don't think I've seen her since we were like 11 Little. or 12. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Until today. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Think yeah. about how many yeah. years have passed. I know. But it wasn't really a big deal. Like as soon as you start, yeah. it just flows. Yeah. 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 It's chill. So good. Right. So, and then, which is why we're here today. Mm -hmm. Why are we here? We're here ah. to talk about peanut butter and jelly burritos. Yeah. That's right. And so a published children's once, book. Author. Once we like, uh, we bought the book, we read it, and we're like, dude, this would be a great topic piece mm -hmm. because of the theme of the of the story. But talk talk to us about the book. What inspired you to write it, and like, what is it yeah. the main focus of this so that we can take away? So I think from? when I had my daughter, she was born in 2015. Um, she was, well, I mean, the ego is within us, so I started like. Mm -hmm. She's eight or nine? She's eight, yeah, no. She seems older. It's because. She's verbal, yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's chatty. So you mean she's fun? Yeah. She's yeah, like, she's, she's my real dog, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. So, um, I started like recognizing how we were so different, right? Because yeah. I think when you have a child, you're obviously, oh, they're going to be similar to me, uh -huh. but she definitely wasn't. Yeah, let me write like Renee. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, check my brain. Okay. My <laughs> brain. Your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> so I started to think, like, what makes her so different? And I just, um, when we were prepping for this podcast, I sent you a photo mm -hmm. of myself, like, in this little dress that... No. Mm, no, no, no. Yeah, I'm in a dress and oh, I'm like, sorry. just like standing, like really, like they probably told me stand still and take a picture, and I did, you know, and I probably told my daughter the same thing, like stand still and take a picture, and she's yeah. like, you know, posing like yeah. and like crazy accessories. So I remember just thinking, like, we're so very different. different. I'm very, very like, mm, well, people tell me because we all have um, different perception of what we are, right? Yes. But I'm just basing. I heard it on you say linear. Yeah, You're I'm very, very linear. linear. What does that mean? Like I, A to B. Let's okay. go. Get it done. Okay. Type A personality. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. yeah. So you're very organized. I don't know organized. if that's still a thing. Where are we going? There? Okay, let's I go. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm extremely or hyper organized, but I like, I you're like flexible. order. I'm yeah. flex very flexible. Yeah. But I'm just telling you what people say about me, not just my own perception. I People tell me that I'm pretty calm. And I wish I had a whiteboard so I could draw this. Um, mm. Street oh. line. There you go. Oh. Yeah. Straight line. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> five minutes left. Oh, all right. We're here. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Anyway. So she is definitely like a stop to smell the roses kind of girl. Oh. So I, we had a task. We had a task. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'm like, we have this much time because she's in activity. So I'm like, we have this much time to get this task done. I need you to, let's go. Okay. So I'm like, come on, let's go. And she like literally stopped to pick flowers, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you so think, it's not just like yeah, figuratively. No, she you, literally. literally. Yeah. Do you think part of it is to annoy you? Because no. there's obviously curiosity there. No, I think because okay. I have been able to um, 
separate myself from her and not right. uh, push myself on, push my own self onto her. Meaning okay. like I allow her to explore and I listen to her. So you didn't have her to your mid 30s. So you had this whole life. Yeah, I was 33. Um, wow. Yeah, I, yeah. Like, cause I had a kid at 21 and yeah. nobody likes Renee, so. Yeah. yeah. Screw Renee. My bad. He has no kids. <laughs> that no we kids. know, that we know, no. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I have my, my fur baby. Yeah, just like a couch, right? Yeah. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so Luna is not linear. No, 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 no. Oh. I mean, she's very good. I mean, obviously, she's a good student. She does good in school, yeah. but um, we're just different that way. And so I started having these conversations about, like, you know, talk to me about what was I like when I was a kid? Because, I mean, you think you're a certain way, but yeah. outsiders yeah. may see you different. Really, that's what the research says. So. You know, I'll ask my parents and, you know, they kind of are matching what, what, like, you were quiet, you didn't say much, you observed, you were sh really shy, slow to warm up, which is like extroversion. Luna is like very social. Okay. She's verbal. She's she can make butterfly. friends. Social yeah. butterfly. Okay. Yeah. She's like, hey, like talks to anyone in the grocery store line. Like, That's you know, she's, dad. she's just social. Yeah. And I'm like. You know, like <laughs> quiet. I didn't, <laughs> yeah, I didn't have that as a kid. I didn't have that much that kind of confidence. The confidence, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so recently, it was really cool that she organized this gift for her teacher, yeah. and um, it was just she's just very different than me. And mm -hmm. so, I, you know, asking those those com those questions about her and I and how I grew up, and then you know, I started thinking about um, like family culture, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, obviously I think about family culture because I teach on it, but just more so, um, introspectively. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my maternal grandmother, uh, my Nana, she made tortillas every single day on the wood stove. So outside in her patio, See, wood stove. she had a wood, wood stove. stove. Like you throw wood inside. Yeah. 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 Wow. Old school, old school stove. That ass. That is and you know the top is um i can just picture the tortillas mm -hmm. just fluffy the up. smell yeah just the yeah very just nostalgic butter. right uh -huh. yes Man, that's so thing. every single day she because she had nine kids <gasps> so she made every single day and in fact her she had a set of twins and they got in trouble for selling for slinging tortillas oh, at their elementary school <laughs> the head so of the time. she would make them and then our generation so her grandkids she'd still make them for us so we okay. put butter on them we oh, put there's cool. nothing like the homemade stuff oh my god yeah. and she make them huge and thin yeah. i don't know how she does like yeah. an art yeah, yeah. Okay. i mean that's hard to like not rip them and you know so there's like an influence of your grandma yes okay so okay. us the grandkids would put peanut butter and jelly wow right? i had so never heard that until uh -huh. this I still to this day have never. Tried. I thought yeah. it was, I thought it was a figurative thing, but you're saying this is it's a, a literal, literal thing. A literal okay. thing. Okay. Because we were the kids that yeah. like, okay, so our our kind of watering hole in Yuma is Mr. G's. Mm. Okay. The Mexican food restaurant, Mr. right? Mr. G's. Renee's, so Renee's face has everything. Yeah. No. Take it easy. Yeah. Tranqui. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. The best. So yeah. roll tacos. Yeah. We were the kid. We were, the grandkids were the ones that used like ketchup, right? Yeah. With not salsa. Yeah. So here we are more Americanized yeah. in this generation. Yeah. So we're putting peanut butter and jelly on our tortillas. freshly made amazing tortillas de harina. Torti yeah. yeah. So no, we grew up like eating that literally. Uh, uh -huh. mm -hmm. But it's, yeah. it's a great, I, I enjoy the figurative thing because Renee and I talk about yeah. our, our upbringing yeah. Yeah. and even though we're both Mexican yeah. and both our parents, y your parents lived for a longer time in Mexico. My parents lived until they're like four or five in Mexico. Uh -huh. And, but I was, <laughs> my Spanish is right that. So I, 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 I'm raised very much Americanized. Yeah. Wasn't, mm -hmm. wasn't accepted by the raza, by the Mexicans, because I right. couldn't speak it. Wasn't accepted by the, the, the white kids because, you know, I was, I was Me so never, I never felt fully accepted. Sure. So in, in that way, so you have this, you know, you have this Americanized version of you. Yeah. And uh, so I went and through the book and that, that's, that's how I felt like yeah. that. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. Page 23. Uh -huh. and, and I point to this one because um, one of my students recently, mm -hmm. we, and I've shared this, this book with my class before, mm -hmm. we've read it to them. Um, and so in, in that, that piece, it's mainly like, am I Mexican or am I American? Mm -hmm. And she says, oh, I really like this story because it's very 
uh, relatable. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think about her name, it's not a traditional like Hispanic name at all. Mm -hmm. And like if you see her most, and she kind of alluded to it, it's like people wouldn't think she's Mexican. Right. And she speaks very little Spanish, but she understands it. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that she mentions, like I like it because it, it mentions how, how fast people speak Spanish and sometimes I get stuck on it. So I can truly relate to that a mm -hmm. lot. Mm -hmm. And and it kind of got us thinking about just language in itself. Like, yeah. like how much of the language do you need to ha be proficient in it in order to be sort of quote unquote Mexican, right? Yeah. And so um, that's one of the things that a lot of my students enjoyed is that it kind of brought up similar uh, themes in their lives, mm -hmm. but it also emphasizes that you can accept both. Like, yeah. it's okay to accept your Mexican heritage and yeah. your American side as well. And you don't have to deny yourself of either one. Mm -hmm. And so um, she was really excited about it. And I was like, oh, well maybe someday you'll get to meet her. Yeah. And she got yeah, to meet her. Yeah. You got to go into we the classroom. We had a conversation, tonight. yeah. So she was really excited about it. And, and then when, when I, I don't know if you noticed, but when I informed the class, hey, remember that story? Mm -hmm. Remember that book we read? And then I said, I asked her to share what she said, and she's like, oh, I liked it, this is this, it's really very relatable. Yeah. But then she's like, well, here she is, here's yeah. the author, and she's like, oh, like her she eyes really kind of yeah. just like, and she just slowly like turned, she's like, that's her? Oh my God, she was all happy. She was so sweet. But um, she was really like excited to go like, Yeah, and then she came and like shared with me a little bit about her upbringing. Interesting though, cause like, you know, we think about our parents, like going to school in the U.S., mm -hmm. right, and how culture was suppressed historically. Mm -hmm. um, uh, definitely, they, they, your parents, my parents, they probably went to school yeah. elementary 60s yeah. and high school in the 70s. And it was, and there, there's these stories, but they yeah. don't seem too messed up about it. Um, and so I get a kick out of that. It's just a culture right here. Yeah, in the body, it's right? just the, how it uh -huh. was, right? Mm -hmm. And we've 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 talked about this a lot about how, and I guess this is one of the similar things that both of you have is that both of your parents spoke English, mm -hmm. right? My parents well, didn't speak both, English. Yeah. 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 My yeah, parents didn't yeah. speak English. They can speak it now. They can mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, get by mm -hmm. and have conversations and you can understand them. Mm -hmm. But me growing up, uh, my mom didn't really speak it. My dad mm -hmm. practiced it a mm -hmm. bit more, especially because he's, he's a social butterfly. He would yeah. talk to anybody. Yeah. And so he, he still, I mean, he, he still doesn't know a lot of words, but he knows a lot. He knows enough right. and then some to be able to go out and communicate. He'll, he's a salesman. I mean, he'll send, he'll sell you this paper clip. Mm -hmm. He's confident. You know? Oh yeah, very confident. Because my, my suegro, it sounds like the very same thing. Very confident. Mm -hmm. It sounds very similar, and, but and he my, is not very my confident. Dad, my dad is everybody's yeah. friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Everybody's okay. friend, and which kind of gets on my mom's nerves, mm -hmm. right? Because it's like, let's go, we're in a hurry, but. Sounds like but, Harv. But it, <laughs> the, my dad, yeah. yeah. So I see, I see that. But as far as communication at home, it was Spanish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Spanish at home. But then in the street, at school, or in sports, it was English. Mm -hmm. English, English. So I didn't learn fully English until I was maybe like second, or maybe like actually, I was in ESL classes until like fifth grade. Mm -hmm. In kindergarten, I didn't speak much English. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I first grade a little bit more and then second grade a little bit more but I was in ESL classes till like I was in fifth or sixth grade mm -hmm. probably fifth grade mm -hmm. but it comes back to the the language and mm -hmm. so something we kind of asked was how much does language determine one's identity mm -hmm. because you're not Mexican if you don't speak Spanish right so do you have to speak Spanish to be part of the culture yeah and, I, and mm -hmm. one time you brought that up like because you said you weren't accepted by la raza here mm -hmm. like mexicans because you didn't speak spanish mm -hmm. right. and then with the non-speaking english or spanish-speaking kids they didn't accept you because well you're a mexican yeah mm -hmm. i mean that's and part of the reason why i married my wife is that her first language is spanish mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my kids they know spanish mm -hmm. yeah it's funny right yeah mm -hmm. but it, even though i don't but you still get by you can you you go to mexicali and play, play ball and then like, well, how do you, you know? Even, like, yeah, even the guys that, hey, how, why have you been talking? How have you been talking for so long? They'll say in Spanish, we both look at each other like, well, say away. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're just <laughs> blowing, yeah. I, mean, I had O to the end of it's because, every, every word. It's because my Spanish is better. And there's a, psycho a, there's a psychological fact, right, Doc? 
your language, the second language is always better when you're drinking, correct? <laughs> you tell me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fun facts. Fun fact. Uh -huh. You don't speak Anic the language. Have a couple evidence. beers and then go. And after see I, but after I drink, like, it's funny. I'll start paying attention to every word coming out of everybody's mouth. But if I'm not drinking or whatever, my brain just is bouncing and, and I just I have a hard time really focusing on every word that they're saying. Yeah. And, yeah. Just because uh, as a kid, I remember my grandparents trying to talk to me because they didn't know any, any English, mm -hmm. all four of them. Mm -hmm. And then they would try to talk to me. And then my cop out was looking to my parents. Mm. Hey, like, what, what are they telling me? Mm -hmm. So I developed that mentally. It's weird. I developed that mentally, this cop out, mm -hmm. instead of sitting there and engaging, hey, mom, dad, what is this word? Or them telling me, well, they said this, this, this in Spanish, which translates to like that. They would just, they would always bail me out. So that, that was, that was my handicap, you know? Mm. So when I drink, I pay attention. <laughs> Long story Long short. Long story short, give me a, give drink, me a shot. And, when I drink, I pay attention. And I speak many uh -huh. languages. Yes. But... So I was thinking about that because I mean I grew up speaking Spanish, but mm -hmm. Monday through Friday I was going to school in Yuma. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Friday through Sunday I was in San Luis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We would go back and visit my grandparents and mm -hmm. my cousins and like every weekend, right? And so I spoke Spanish, but when I went to San Luis, oftentimes I didn't speak certain words well enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I specifically remember one time because I smashed my my fingers under a rock in a canal, mm -hmm. and my nails were screwed up. But anyways, they said, "What happened to you?" Oh, me machuqué con up, and I said piedra instead of and, and well, I said pierda instead of piedra, oh. yeah. and yeah. they're like, "Ha!" Ah, and they started making fun oh, of me. Yeah. yeah, and I was like in fourth grade, but I still remember like the fact that. I was like, why are they making fun of me? Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of got embarrassed a little bit because of the fact that I was mispronouncing the word Recording. or I wasn't like, I didn't know what I was saying or something like that. So I was just like, hmm, what, how do I say that? How do I speak in a way that is proper? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I said, am I not like Mexican enough? Mm -hmm. Am I not like speaking the language well enough in a way that I'll be accepted. And mm -hmm. so I became a little bit more self-conscious yeah, about sure. the way I spoke because... Self-monitoring your dialogue. Yeah, and so it was one of those things where then I started to kind of like be a little bit more self-conscious about my, my Spanish, Spanish. And so like the fact that the language in itself was a big determinant of whether mm -hmm. you were Mexican enough yeah. or, or accepted enough. I don't know if you ever had a similar... Well, yeah, of course. And I think... Um, Colorism too has a has an impact. Oh, yeah. Like in terms of languages, I I have read a little bit of research on linguistics. I don't know much, but I have read that language is what ties you closest to your culture hmm. or your ethnicity. So. So then everything else would kind of fall after that, right? And then and naturally, um, you look at language, right? Mm -hmm. I'm. First generation? Mm -hmm. I don't know. We kind of like had this this yeah. this conversation. Am I first, first generation, generation or uh -huh. second generation? Well, I'm first generation because first generation. because I'm the first to go to school here. I was born, born here, here yeah. right? Um, I was born here, but I still speak Spanish. But now that you know, as we get older, mm -hmm. like my 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 siblings, they have kids. Now, what you notice is that their kids, the la the Spanish language is it gets lost a bit. Oh, from generation. Uh, you know, from yeah. generation. So, yeah. and, and typically, you notice that it's it's from the how did it go? The mom's language is more dominant. Maternal, Mat maternal. I mean, culturally speaking, like family culture, maternal, in, maternal influences are stronger in all aspects. Okay, and so, and that makes sense because, like, growing up, naturally. We spent time with both of our families, mm -hmm. my, my mom and my dad's side, mm -hmm. but we spent the majority, or I don't say majority, but a large chunk of our family time was with my mom's sure. side, that with the sense. Lopez. Yeah. So Sunday or Friday, go to San Luis, stop by in Summerton, visit my, my dad's side. Mm -hmm. And then we would leave to San Luis, right. but we never stayed with my Nana, my Tata in Summerton, we, but we would stay with my mom. It was like 70, 30. Yeah, I would say 70, 30, 80, 20, yeah. close to 60, 40, not so much 60, 40, yeah, but, but, that's but we, was still, we were still close with my dad's mm -hmm. side, but um, we would notice that 
several of my my cousins that were not live that didn't live here mm -hmm. they spoke spanish but it was more broken mm -hmm. spanish mm -hmm. they understand it mm -hmm. they can speak it but it's it's a different yeah spanish mm -hmm. does that make sense mm -hmm. and now that there's kids and the next generation that language is lost yeah so does that not make them mexican right and that's like the question where they're like well, yeah so culture I, I think identity is for us to say right mm. and so cultural identity is our ability to say how am i going to express that and, and so that's an I individual choice i think that's part of the reason why i became a history teacher yeah. especially when i started learning about more about like mexican history mm -hmm. Mm -hmm and how everybody you meet mexicans and they want to identify as spaniard right but if you really get down in the class system mm -hmm. you have at the top the actual spaniards that were born in spain mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. those are the ones that have all the power and all the chin up type things right. you know and then but then there's pure blood bred spaniards but that are born here mm -hmm. crioles right yeah. and then after that you have the mestizos which are mixed with indios and mm -hmm. and uh in indios and the the spanish spanish yeah. blood right and it's always those, the mixed ones, that always want to claim I'm full blood yeah. Spaniard mm. and like putting it down. Now the fun part is, mm -hmm. is we're, uh, when the, the, the Aztecs, they refer to themselves as Mexica. Mm -hmm. And since the Spaniards couldn't pronounce it correctly, that's when we be, became the Mexicanos okay. instead okay. of the Mexica, yeah. like oh, that. Okay. So you talk about, you know, giving up certain languages and giving up culture. Yeah. It's, it's just funny in the Mexican, Mexican culture, like, you look at it, you 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 look you go to the border and you look at the kids selling chicles. Right. It's the shortest, darkest ones there. Mm -hmm. Who's running the country? The lightest, tallest, mm -hmm. tall, lightest skin, tallest ones there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that structure like is still to a certain part, even though it's not in place. It's it's kind of in place. So yeah. and that's the colorism you're referring to. Sure. Because uh -huh. yeah. we would joke around like in my family because we're light skin. Like mm -hmm. <coughs> from mm -hmm. my my dad's side my dad's like you see him and he's he's brown yeah mm -hmm. but he has green eyes yeah mm -hmm. but mainly he's brown because he's worked outside yeah. his mm -hmm. whole life but he's he's light-skinned like yeah. me and my mom's mm -hmm. light-skinned too and we would joke that oh well we got we grew up with mexican white privilege mm -hmm. because oftentimes it's a real I, thing it, no it's a real it's thing it's a real thing yeah. And, yeah and the example is yeah. like growing up a lot of times people didn't know i spoke spanish uh -huh. Like, ah, este güero. Oh, wow, like that? Yeah. Wow. Like, este güero, que se cree? It was the opposite mm -hmm. for me. Like, what was he talking about me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, and yeah. one time, one time, I, I, I never got in fights. Mm -hmm. But in fourth grade, I got in a fight. Oh. <laughs> got in a fight. But the kid I, that was like, him and his brother, they were, they were trying to be bad or whatever. And I, I wasn't going to let them, like, try to bully me. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up kind of getting in a fight. And the, the kid's brother didn't know I spoke Spanish. Mm -hmm. And he was like saying, barralo, barralo. And I, I was like, what the hell? He said, what do you think? I don't speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. And so when he went to go try to kick me yeah, and sweep yeah. me, I jumped up and I kicked him because I was already yeah. anticipating. Yeah. Yeah. And then like we started wrestling and my brother came in. I could picture this like the Matrix. The yeah, slow yeah, jump. Like, yeah, yeah. Barralo, barralo, barralo. I'm like, yeah, I already uh, know, fool. But, uh, <laughs> Pedro Blue Pill. Suspended in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I kind of got jumped up. But it was like the the fact that should have made the karate I looked kid, a certain way like the karate kid movie you're a ralph macho yeah uh -huh. i was like wax on wax off and everything <laughs> sweep, so, sweep so the, in your sweep family the did you notice a difference in sibling order and language yeah and so i'm three of six right and so the language amongst my siblings yeah. it kind of slowly starts Deteriated, to get weaker, right? yeah. weaker. <laughs> Because if you look up from the oldest to the youngest, there is a quite a mm -hmm. stark difference in the in the way we speak Spanish. Mm -hmm. We all understand it, right? But I want to say, like after my sister, number mm -hmm. four, like you start to notice a little bit, yeah. You know, and and I think it's naturally going to happen when there's there was such a huge age gap mm -hmm. for, between the oldest to the to the youngest. I think it was like a sixteen year gap. My, my oldest brother is 16 years older than my youngest. Okay. Um, but yeah, there's definitely like that yeah. difference in, in the language. But it's not like my parents spoke English at home. Mm -hmm. They spoke Spanish. Right. But if you're only using it at home and you're not practicing it anywhere else, right. it's... And that's one of the things I noticed when I started... When I taught in San Luis to here, mm -hmm. over there, it's, it's border town. Right. 
and it's Spanish everywhere. Yeah. They go yeah. home, it's Spanish. They're well, right. outside, it's Spanish. At school, everybody speaks Spanish. Right. So they don't really practice that as much. So the the proficiency isn't as high there as it is here. Mm -hmm. And here, I mean, a lot of kids speak Spanish, but they're also very strong in English. Mm -hmm. And and there's some other subtle differences. Here you have more Ethans and, and Kevins, mm -hmm. uh, which wasn't as common over there. Um, but there's- What are the names over there? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. whatever you know. Yeah, traditional. <laughs> nicknames. Yeah, more, more traditional. Freaking yeah. nicknames. Yeah, yeah, like some, uh -huh. some classic nicknames. We've not talked about nicknames before, but the language in itself, there's a, such a stark difference between the, yeah. the language, yeah. the culture of the language in San Luis yeah. and here. Oh yeah. Very different. And the border's not that far from here. Right. But oh, yeah. 11 miles removed. So yeah. I, know, I know growing yeah. up, I, I, because I wasn't over there, but I wasn't over here. And that's like the history of the Chicano, even though right. Chicanos, for right. the most part, no Spanish. But uh, it's very Southern California on the Yuma. And yeah, yeah it's, so it's a mix of all well, this. Well, if you think uh, about the term in itself. Small. Like. If Mexicano. If so, like, what does Chicano yeah, mean right? to you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? What does Chicano mean to you? Not if they're not accepted over there because you're, because you're from here, you're Pocho, and you're not accepted over here because you're Mexican. Mm -hmm. So it's like it, it came out of more of like the '60s and '70s, yeah. and we were labeled. I think I think by the, by the Mexicans as a small Mexican. Mm -hmm. Chi it, it used to be a derogatory Chico. term. Chico. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like, to be yeah. called Chicano was like to like to be offensive. I heard from yeah. Cheech Marin. That's well, the first time Cheech, I, heard I was just about to say uh -huh. he in a, in a documentary talks about the term Chicano. Ah, and, that, that's right. Uh -huh. And in the '60s, uh -huh. there the Chicano movement. There's a lot of civil rights movements and 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 groups, you know, especially mm -hmm. in in the South with Martin Luther King and, mm -hmm. and Malcolm X. Yeah, <coughs> they embraced the term. They mm -hmm. said, you know what? Uh -huh. We are Chicano. Yeah. We're taking it back. We're taking yeah. it back yeah. Yeah. and making it our own. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it, there seems to be different interpretations of the term because I have a different interpretation yeah, sure. than, than others. But yeah. I mean. I think too, it's like it, it aligns also with, for example, if you were um, explaining the definition of gender, okay. right? It's a v It can be Very construed as am subjective and ambiguous, right? But there is a academic term for gender, right? Mm -hmm. But the way we perceive it yeah. is different because it's about identity. Mm -hmm. So I think in the same in the same light, we're looking at that like, what is a Chicano? Well, it's whatever you define it as. Yeah. Whatever your experiences are, first generation or your first generation. I, I, yeah, look, I, I think yeah. I think I think I'm supposed to be third. So my grandparents came over here, and they were already out of school and everything. All four of them came over here, and yeah. then my parents, my mom was four. My dad was actually born here, but there was some paperwork dispute where my oh, grandfather okay. had to go back, so he stayed for like four or five years over there until mm. he was like five years old, mm -hmm. and then he came back. Okay. And then I was raised fully over here right. and fully in English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like very, the only Spanish I ever heard is when I went over to grandparents' house right. or when my parents were talking dirty to each other. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Yeah, yeah. No, I remember. How do you say that again? No, yeah, I don't want to ask. Like, I don't even want to know. My daughter was like the other. Just like, see their eyes, cochino. She's like, can you please wanna... speak in English so I can understand the tea? <laughs> I'm like, no. This is right, Lulu. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's funny. That's how verbal she is. No. I'm like, uh. But it's, no. it is interesting though, like because like for for look, many. Look at Renee's notes. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here, let me pass this on. For 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 many of the term Chicano is just like oh well you you're Mexican American and doesn't speak Spanish yeah which in my opinion that's, that's or Spanglish like Spanglish is a whole other perspective oh yeah you yeah. know yeah. Spanglish well, is that's another yeah. like so a subculture uh -huh. within right yeah. but what I what I always say is like don't worry if you don't speak Spanish the Aztecs didn't either yeah true and for many people in Mexico Spanish isn't even their first language uh -huh. there's so many. There's so many there's different indigenous tribes. And we looked this yeah. up, right? You're like, how many indigenous tribes? And we, we found that a lot. there's 68 indigenous tribes that still exist in Mexico. And on top of that, there's 130 more languages and cultures, indigenous cultures in Mexico that What's have been lost. interesting about Mexico City is they have so many different little neighborhoods. Yeah. Of, I mean, and it, it's like any other metropolitan area. If you, if you, I mean, obviously, been. obviously it's... Mexico, right? So there are predominantly yeah. Mexicans, Mexican-born people, but they're ha they definitely have neighborhoods of different groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, our friend Raul just went a few oh, weeks, okay. uh, like recently. We were just talking yeah. about it. 
and he was just like, man, it's just a different world. Yeah. It's the, I mean, you, not just the language, but the food and just yeah. the culture of the city in itself is just rich. It's like, I, I, I want to really live there. Do you know like, the, the murder rate there. down yeah. there is actually lower than like New York City and Chicago and oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's actually a safer city to visit. I mean, I was, I was young, but and Cartels. and I would take like the bus on my own and just, just in uh, Mexico City. Yeah, and just kind of uh -huh. wander. Yeah, like by myself. But yeah. I was young. But I mean, that was like twenty years ago. Yeah, so more than twenty years ago. I yeah. wouldn't do that now. No, but hmm. I think it's more the guys that have to worry about that in general, and not universal like mm -hmm. pickpockets. Because my dad used to. Yeah, they, they, there yeah. was there's more of that rather than a kidnapping or. Right. Yeah, because no. I don't have a problem. Just, it's well, just I'm petty theft. Well, mm -hmm. rather than you get your head chopped yeah, off, because you got to be connected to the game to get your head chopped off. I walked uh -huh. around by myself when I went to Colombia. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I was by myself yeah. walking around uh -huh. a lot of times, and I was like, I'm cool. Like I just yeah. didn't draw attention to myself. Right. I didn't wear my watches or anything like that. I just like strolled the streets within the boundaries. Within, of, yeah, yeah, and just kind of mm -hmm. like browse around. It was like two in the morning, just looking for a food oh, wow. spot. And I'm like, okay, just kind of stay in the light and then just... Did you feel uncomfortable? No, or no, felt fine? I, I yeah. felt fine. Do they say platano or banano over there? Uh, both. Okay. Mm. Yeah, both. It just depends. Like, uh, platano is like what we call a plantain. plantain. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Banano is, or is like what we call banana. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. But it's, it just depends on what kind of dish you're trying to order yeah. or ask for. Uh -huh. but, but what... I'm really interested in, and in kind of what we'll get into next is your, you're part of a study. You did a study. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And we we're like, oh. so, cross that out. yeah. <laughs> so the, I know the general idea of the study yeah. is that minority women, uh -huh. tend, when they get a degree, go to school, get a degree, they t a high percentage of them tend to go more towards when they get the four-year degree towards an extended campus. So for example, here in the Imperial Valley, well, we have San Diego State in mm -hmm. San Diego, mm -hmm. but there's, in Calexico, there's an extended yeah. campus. And in Yuma, it's we It's not in San Diego. At the, well, when we were uh, coming out of high school, we had AWC. Right. Was there anything else? No. That's well, like IBC not, here. not for me. No, uh -huh. not there wasn't. Not in my grade, yeah. No, there isn't, but now there's any Yuma, mm -hmm. we have uh, U of A satellite. Is there an ASU, Arizona State? Yeah, so all three in-state universities are represented at our campus. Okay. So none and of that was around when we no, were there, but no, now there is. But it, the really nice thing is like, they're all varying in degrees, so they don't really have a crossover. So they're respectful of each other. Mm -hmm. So each institution... Like specializes? In yeah, so for example, NAU's um, psych program. Mm -hmm. They're pretty strong and they, they're, you know, they get our psych students, right? Yeah. Okay. And then U of A gets our family studies yeah. students, and ASU gets our education students. So they don't step on each other's oh. toes. So, so while they're all represented, they're they have really critically thought about what programs can we offer to help the community. Yeah. Um, and it's great. Yeah, I get it. so it, I was hypothesizing my own, and I know I read the paper, but I have a short memory. Yeah. If you could remind us, it's so we're hypothesizing. I wonder yeah. why more minority women go to local. Uh, so yeah, tell us about your what was the focus of yeah, your study? Yeah, so it's like a mixed myth. So back in, back in like 2008, nine, something around there, I started working for U of A, mm -hmm. part time, part time teaching and getting this um, bachelor's degree program, mm -hmm. like getting it, the word out in the community, and um, so we started this. Uh, family Studies Human Development Bachelor's of Science program in Yuma. So our students at the college could have this two plus two program, two years at the college, mm -hmm. two years, and then stay in Yuma, right? Okay. Um, so um, we started working on that and we're getting more students like, um, basically more, more students in seats and it was growing. And after that I started working on my doctorate and I wanted to use those students particularly particular to see like what what was it that's determining them staying here mm -hmm. so um, I ran a mixed method study um, and well we actually looked at them in a couple different studies what but does mixed method mean um, mixed methods means that you're using quantitative and, and qualitative. qualitative data okay got it numbers and feelings yeah numbers and feelings yeah. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. 
That's what I remember from my master's. Yeah. Numbers and feelings. I like numbers and I have feelings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, sorry, go ahead. So, yeah, so just really looking at like numerated values, so data taken from like Likert scale. Yeah. And then uh -huh. um, qualitative like interviews or focus groups, yeah. and then um, intersecting that data to share with your audience. So what did you find in general of why? Generally speaking, students were staying because of family obligations. Yeah. Oh. That's what I was thinking. That's exactly yeah. what I was thinking because yeah. I've heard these stories, especially if you're a female, Mexican. Mm -hmm. Your family is going to keep a tighter grip on right. you traditionally, not letting because I had a buddy. Spoken or unspoken, yeah. it's it's you know it. Because I had a buddy, my, my college roommate, his oldest sister was the first one to get accepted to university. Mm -hmm. She wanted to leave, but her mm -hmm. parents wouldn't let her leave. Right. So he was second, uh -huh. like a couple years later, and he said they don't want him to leave either. It was like, Psh, I'm leaving since he was a oh, boy. Right. They were more accepting, right. yeah. but the girl had to stay yeah. there. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So that, that that's the uh, general idea I have yeah. in my head. Mm -hmm. I could see that though. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So what were some of the other findings that you? So I looked at um, family, finances, and culture. And interesting, the culture was a little bit lower in terms of their ties to staying there. Yeah. But I think that was definitely like a limitation of my study because culture and family, right, the structure, the family structure, how can you have family without culture? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And culture without family. So yeah. I think that conflation was, um, if I could do the study again, I would say that would be a limitation. and look at that different and ask questions differently because mm -hmm. of it's hard to it's really hard to study family without looking at family culture and so i think they go hand in hand mm -hmm. so i would ask them really specifically um how their family culture affected yeah because there's mm -hmm. i mean it's like a spectrum right yeah. there's so you can be on one end or another and if you're on this end it could have a stronger influence yeah. on your decisions. I mean, and we just discussed just between us three, we're all Mexican, we're all Mexican-American, right. but there's a spectrum, yeah. Yeah. even right here, just with us three at the table. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So I can infer that, but I mean, the data doesn't say that culture impacted them as much, but uh -huh. we could really infer that. Yeah, it does because it's family culture. Mm -hmm. And you also, like, I don't know, single parent home. Yeah. You know, yeah. or you... Are you like kind of like the head of the household where you're right. also having to help mom or dad? Mm -hmm. or and you grandma. hear that a lot about the high school level of, uh, you s and, and they s actually show that in the movie Stand and Deliver. Mm -hmm. oh, how yeah. one of the girls, she's in the calculus class mm -hmm. and calculus. she has to take care mm -hmm. of the kids and cook for What's the kids. Calculus? And and then the mom gets home uh, th from a long day at work. She I think goes she, to sleep. Yeah, yeah and, mm -hmm. she, and then she tells the girl, all right, the girl, all right, cool, I can do my homework now. Mm -hmm. Mom gets home, all right, hey, turn off the light because I'm going to go to sleep. Yeah. So now, where is she supposed to do her homework? Right. You know it's what crazy, I mean? but that that's uh -huh. the nature of, of what many of the, our students go yeah. through. Yeah. Yes. Um, oh, the pandemic. Uh, oh, man, why can't you attend class? Oh, because I'm watching my brothers and right, sisters. Right, Because yeah. we have high school age kids. Mm -hmm. And this study was done pre-pandemic. Yeah, mm -hmm. pre-pandemic. Uh -huh. yeah. I'd be curious to see what it would yeah. look like now, post-pandemic, yeah. mm -hmm. and if there's a stronger... Yeah, like and also there's a, a stronger influence. presence in university in our community. So I would like to see what students would say today. Yeah. You know? I mean, we've talked about this before, but the pandemic has just changed. Oh, yeah. It's changed the game, like, in education and in every industry, really. Mm -hmm. But we're still, like, not too far removed from that. So right. we, don't really s we don't really see the full impact that it's had. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we... Long term. Yeah, maybe, like, 10 years from now. Besides mm -hmm. making us dumber. In general, yeah. yeah. Right. COVID. Yeah. So <laughs> there was also like the finances were the issue. So within the oh, yeah. within the home, I mean, going off to uni is expensive. Yeah. yeah. So if you're not, you know, this is way. It's just I, I remember uh, my one of my last semesters at San Diego State before the raise it to twelve hundred. The tuition was eight eighty eight per semester. Wow. And now tuition per semester at San Diego State is somewhere around like thirty six hundred. So wow. it's like nearly quadruple. Oh yeah. Yeah. But our salaries have not right. quadrupled, right. and that's that's what to me and that's, that's only that's tuition, what's amazing. right? I mean, that's only that's just that's tuition. tuition. Not we're not talking board. dorms. We're not talking books. We're yeah. not talking yeah. It's just, not talking it's about just, like if you want to live off campus. Mm -hmm. It's like yeah. So I remember I used to think it was expensive back then, right? And and so when I first started teaching high school, I used to tell kids, dude, just take on loans, take on loans. Mm -hmm. But then I saw prices going up. It would it changed to. Mm -hmm. Damn, you know maybe See, you but, shouldn't. But maybe back shouldn't then you could still like work a part time job and still be able make to it. like make it mm -hmm. pay yeah. bills and and still have a good time just the loans are a lot bigger but now it's just like oh my god yeah it's, it's incredibly incredible. expensive yeah. and and i hear students just anecdotally share you know i'm gonna study here and then i'm gonna go to grad school away 
You know, I want to yeah. I want to study law. Yeah. So I want to get a JD, and you know, it's it's nice to hear that they have this really um, financial savvy plan. It's about nice to hear that they know what a JD is. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what a JD uh. is. <laughs> so did you know there's only two presidents that have ever gotten a PhD? What? Two presidents have ever gotten a PhD? Can I guess? Yes. Bill Clinton. No, sorry. It's so definite. No, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Stupid. Barack Obama. Yeah, Barack Obama's one. He, has, he, he, he got a Juris Doctor from Harvard. <laughs> and then? In law. There's a reason why the Affordable Care Act had no holes in it with the Supreme Court. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Because he knew how to write it. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. he was a freaking Juris Doctor, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and the other one was? Richard Nixon. Woodrow Wilson. Oh, oh. Yeah. that's right. He was the president he, of Princeton. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. He was a hi he was a history professor too. He was oh, I didn't know that. He was an academic. Yeah. yeah. Do you like his like my stick figure? So okay. You want to so, get to the end? So uh, on that on that note, mm -hmm. we're gonna end with a f little fun little okay. game. Okay. Okay. And uh, you'll go first, but you have to finish the line. Okay. Okay. I'll try my best. Just <laughs> all right. Finish the line. Okay. You ready? You're you're pretty good at this. Are you warm? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. It's seven o'clock. On the dot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my drop. I'm okay. in my drop. <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah. All right, here's the next one. Okay. <clears throat> I wish I was special. So very special, but. But I'm, I'm a, a creep. creep. Yes. Yeah. That's my favorite. Okay, okay, right? Here we go. On Wednesdays. You we were pink. That's right. <laughs> on Wednesdays, you were pink. I knew you were going to get that one right Boom. for sure. Okay, okay. All right, I got the next one. Ready? Cash rolls everything around me. Cream. Oh, cream. I know cream, but I don't know the rest of it. Uh, that's all you gotta oh, say. Get the money. Cream, yeah. dollar, yeah. dollar, dollar bill, yeah. y'all. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Number five. It was a clear black night. A clear white moon. <laughs> Warren Jeeves. <laughs> Warren Jeeves on the streets trying, trying to, to consume. <laughs> That one I had a hard time, yeah. but I know it in my head. Yeah. But but it, it, yeah. we just as long as the song popped okay. in your head, yeah. Doc, yeah. we won't okay. kick you off the show. <coughs> okay, okay. As long as we know that there's some light it's bulb there. went off, that's all we care about. The Doc. 90s yeah. is coming yeah. back. Let me yeah. premise this okay. by saying I I don't sing. Okay. My dad does, but I don't sing. I sing when I'm drunk. Yeah. So do I dance? Oh yeah, you gotta dance. Yeah, I dance. All right, ready? next one. Okay. Not sober. How many are there? There's a lot, but okay. Just be quiet, Doc. Go with okay. it. Okay. Just go with it. Let's go with it. All right, ready? This is science. Okay. All right. Me canta así, así, así. Me canta así, me canta así. Oh, Selena, yeah, right? Bitty, bitty, bum, oh, bum. Oh, bitty, bitty, bum, bum, That's why I wore this shirt, yeah. just for oh, that, just just for that, that moment. Okay. Come on, dog. Not because no, she, no, yeah, yeah. Not because she yeah. was a pocha or anything, or she didn't speak yeah. good Spanish you, did at you, first. Did you say you're nervous? Yeah. Well, nervous that's the point. Pop quiz. Yeah. That's what we're doing. We yeah. wanted to, because okay. we know you don't like surprises. That's exactly what we're doing. I like to be prepared for quizzes. Well, good, where you're not. All right, here's another, right? I'm not a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. Yeah. I'm a cool mom. Yes. You should get that one. I'm not a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. Okay, ready? <coughs> Girls, you know you better. Watch out. Yeah. Some, some guys. guys <laughs> some guys are always <laughs> about. about. Yeah. That thing, baby. All right. all right, number nine. It was all a dream. You used to read a Horda magazine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some pepper and heavy beer in the limousine. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's okay. right. All right, ready? Two more. I don't believe in God. I believe in science. Yeah, a little <laughs> natural lever, actually. Yeah, there. natural lever, baby. All right. Last one. Okay, Ready? Last one. Oh, wait, where am I at? Mama just killed a man. I only knew that part. <laughs> I was thinking along with that. Put part. a gun against his like head. Pulled, pulled my trigger, trigger now, now he's, he's dead. dead. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. My time has come. My time has come. Life has just we begun. We should do karaoke one day. Yeah. Like I right think now. we're doing it now. Yeah. yeah I, think I, so. hey, I can't help it if we're good. I, I just, what was my score? It's not our yeah, fault. Yeah, it's pretty good. You only got two struggled with out, yeah. of, out of 11. She so. got a B. Oh, okay. Two, three, like, like, out of like, 11? Like Spanish yeah. class. Yeah. You okay. got, <laughs> she got a B. You got a B in Spanish. Yeah. So <laughs> on that note, Doc, Thanks Thank for being you. here. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for sharing your your peanut butter and Thank jelly you. story, and you know, talking about language and culture. We'd like to have you on again All sometime. Right.
you decide okay. the topic. So, on that note, cheers to another one. Cheersies. Cheers I hope we made. I hope we made you uncomfortable. Yeah. The uncomfortable. last part of the quiz. Yeah. The Perfect. Quiz, that yeah. was that was uncomfortably fun. Yeah. So. Till next time. All right. Bye. Yeah. Perfect.